Hello, welcome to day six, yes, day six of Vlogmas, the most vlogtacular, vo most vlogtacular month of the year, because it is December, the greatest month of the year. I don't have any real reason for thinking that other than, you know, it's December, it's really nice we get stuff, me and Dan especially, because it's our birthdays. I know I've said that before. I've got a special video plan for my birthday, so... Maybe Dan should put one out on his. I don't think he'll be able to top mine, though. He doesn't have any animals. I have many, many animals. So, today, what am I bringing you? Well, to continue my theme of books, because they're pretty much the entirety of my life, I'll let you take a gander at my bookshelf. So, let's have a look. And here we have the wonders of shelf one. This is a mixed shelf. I've only just put together these bookshelves on, honestly, so I haven't really sorted everything out, so I'll be sort of coming across weird stuff in here. So, number one, a couple of books I quite like, um, a couple of role-playing books. Volog's Guide series, an excellent Forgotten Realms thing that include a lot of interesting lore for, well, Forgotten Realms, it's very, some good maps in there. Volog's Guide to Waterdeep. Now this is a lovely little book for telling you all you ever wanted to know about the city. It has detailed street maps, loads and loads of just story hooks and all manner of great things. Just some really nice art in here too. So if you ever are sort of stuck for an adventure, this is the book you should go to. And sort of it's presented like a proper travel guide. So like taverns have ratings on like how good the food is, how likely you are to be robbed, um, and you know, all presented from this Brian Blessed looking motherfucker. And best of all, in my opinion, it comes with this great big full colour map of Waterdeep. So if you guys are, are planning like a really big in-depth sort of, let's say a chase scene from let's say the market, so you know, you guys are there, you're running down the warrior's way, but then, you know, you can sort of really properly do the twisting turns and alleyways through here and get your players in all manner of trouble. <laughs> so a really nice book to have if you want to do a game in Waterdeep. Now, as you can see, this is a map of floppy, a mass of floppies or trades, whatever you want to call them, um, single issue comic books and a few smaller collections. And my Galactica Top Gun, Stein. So, uh, let's have a look in here. So, a couple of um, 2000 AD old ones that I bought that because they contain uh, the they contain sort of first versions of the Ballad of Halo Jones. And I can and I'm very fond of the Ballad of Halo Jones. <laughs> So well, let's sort of just dig in, shall we? Uh, ah yes, the thing that contains most of these is I have a nearly complete selection of Strangers in Paradise. Um, I love the covers to some of these. Uh, these are all mixed as well, so I really should have sorted these out. Uh, Optic Nerve is a really good and interesting um, Indie series. Uh, let's see. I missed it a few minutes back. I Killed Giants, another fine series. Uh, ah, Devil's Panties. <laughs> Don't know why I have these. It's an online webcomic, but I bought them. Ancient Silver Surfer, more Strangers in Paradise. The Tick. Not as good as the cartoon, which is a shame. Uh, lots of strangers in paradise. Ah. Now these are another um, web comic that I have in physical form. Goth House Collections. And these are really, really good. It's actually a lot better to read them in the trade or whatever format. Next we have my gravity novels. So as you can see here, I have a lot... Well, I have the... Uh, Love and Rockets, Maggie series, uh, some Sandman, Strontium Dog, a bit of Hellboy. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. 
Deadpool Killustrated. This is a pretty well fun one. It's given to me by a good friend of mine for Christmas. And uh, Deadpool kills the classics, uh, classics of literature. So you can see there he's killing the whale from Moby Dick. So let's see. Oh, my second copy of The Ballad of Halo Jones. Uh, I lent the first copy out and never got it back. But I do consider that to be my favourite graphic novel of all time. Uh, so Watchmen, as one always has to have. Nemi, some fun um, syndicated strips uh, about Goss Girl. Kind of mixed these days. And the Finder series. Really, really good stuff. Okay, what do we have down here? Ah. This is one of my weird ones. A Suggestive Inquiry into Hermetic Mystery by Mary Ann Atwood. A weird, weird book I picked up in London in a charity shop. At first, I thought it was just scribbled in by a child, but turns out almost every line had been highlighted. Uh, the Story of Civilization by W. Burnett series. I'm trying to collect the whole lot, but they're actually surprisingly difficult to track down. Uh... Oh, Dune from yesterday's video. Uh, Fire into the Sun, an excellent book. Uh, yeah, for some reason Kevin Smith released his blog posts as a book. That was weird. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? A couple of cookbooks. I really like sweets, so... Well, I like baking. I don't actually eat that much in the way of sweets. Uh, let's see. Uh... The Resurrectionist, if you can see that there, that's a very strange book. Um, this is sort of a weird pseudo-anatomy. The Resurrectionist by E.B. Hubperth, I think. Now, to be honest, I bought this book because I just wanted to know what the fuck it was about. Look at that cover, that is a really striking cover. A ske an anatomical skeleton of what I presume is an angel. Um, and it's sort of an anatomical journal of strange and wonderful creatures, so... And this sort of... Doctor's presumed journey through all manner of things. Uh, yeah. Skeletal structure of Ganesh, or Ganesha, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Lovely, lovely illustrations, and some really quite funny stuff. Um, just give you a second to read that if you want. Yeah, so weird and funny, and I'm really glad I bought it. <laughs> it's just a strange, strange book. Um, ah. These two are by... Forgotten books, uh, or as that reprint um, weird old books. So British Goblins there and Malleus Maleficorum. Uh, the 1937 to 38 International Pictures Almanac. I picked this up in Shrewsbury. Just a, a listing of every film released that year, and you can see how thick it is for the, back then. Uh, let's see. Anything else interesting? Uh, Baron Munchausen in a very nice copy. <laughs> oh, these two are quite cute. These were the World Book Day editions of these. Uh, they have since been re-released in larger formats. And are just really quite cute books. Um, if you can track them down, I'd recommend reading them. And here we have uh, a sort of mixed lot. Uh, this is mainly my gaming books, and as you can see, I have quite a few, um, though I would like more. Uh, now this one here is uh, the Guillermo del Toro Cabinet of Curiosities, which is a lovely book, um, full of all manner of weird things. Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. This is a lovely hardbound edition. Um, it's basically just Del Toro's notes on sort of making all his films, and it's got photos and notes from his journals, photographs of his house. Oh, it's just a lovely, lovely book. 
and I mean look at this stuff this was just what he was planning for making Hellboy I I wish I had that kind of of dedication to create such a beautiful piece of utilitarian. You know, he sort of takes these notes, these detailed drawings. Oh, I wish I could do this, but I don't have the stamina or energy. I look at this stuff. This is all across his career. I haven't even made my way through half of it. It's just sort of, you have to sort of sit down and just digest it. This sort of, you see unused ideas and sort of the evolution of various things. I, if you're at all interested in his work, I would, would, I would really recommend this. So that's Guillermo del Toro's cabinet of curiosities. And the next also is the Jamie Hernandez um, art book, which I'll bring up into the big screen momentarily. I actually use this a lot for drawing reference. Uh, uh, so let's take a quick look at it. The art of Jaime Hernandez, this, the, what is it, Jaime? Jaime Hernandez? I don't know. Correct me in the comments. The Secret of Life and Death by Tob Todd Heinecht, and I'll just say, I love the art of the Hernandez brothers, and Jaime is my favourite. So you'd think I'd know how to pronounce his name. This is just loads and loads of art and sketches and sort of one-off pieces and the, his history with cartooning or sequential art. And I, as I said, I often use this for reference. Because I am a scrub when it comes to drawing. I love doing it, but I am just terrible. So, and this just has so many useful things. And just nice to see some of the stuff of my, you know, my favorite artist probably. Of like how he develops stuff. How he develops his art. Uh, I mean, I only have one complaint about Love and Rockets, and that's that I can't have some of this stuff as a t-shirt. Like, that would be a fucking awesome t-shirt to have. Most of the covers would be. So, yeah. Also, I really like seeing sort of sketch stuff of professional artists, because it makes me feel a little better. So, the art of Jaime Hernandez, The Secret of Life and Death. Look at that cutie smile! And uh, here's a Bible, because I can't bear to throw out books. Now, this may seem like a slightly emptier shelf. That's just because I keep all my Penguin Classics to themselves. I think it just looks nicer that way. Um, because, yeah. So I've got room for more. <laughs> so, Chekhov. Okay. So there's some interesting ones in here. I have um, Gautier over there next to Bancho. Uh, I was just flicking through Bancho actually last night. Really, really just enjoyable quick reads, those poems. So let's go down a shelf. Here are my penguin modern classics, which I keep to themselves. Uh, yeah. Over here, because I was running out of space. I actually just received on the water margin today, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, the Welcome to Night Vale book, I really, really recommend. That is a lot of fun. Ah, now we're getting to a fun shelf. Um, I really like these di penguin dictionaries. The one of symbols is very good. Um, and classical mythology has been very useful as well. The Stargate novelization. The only thing I've ever truly stolen. I took it from a library and never returned it. I can't remember if it was intentional or not. It's surprisingly better than the film. <laughs> and I love the Star Trek, um, the Stargate series. Uh, the Collins Pocket Classics. Um, some of those don't really fit into any pocket I have. 
Uh, oh, these are some Faber poetry collections that are just lovely. Uh, the Deluxe Transitive Vampire, a weird book on grammar. Um, Oh, all right, let's see if you can see that. The Mountain Poems of Stonehouse um, is a poetry collection by a Chinese monk. And it, there's some truly beautiful poems in there. Uh, as you can tell, I love poetry. Um, a, a Buddhist monk living on a mountain and very interesting works. Uh, these are Murty Classics, these red books here. The, well, uh, let's see, I have Sufi lyrics and the third Agathita poems of the first Buddhist women, so of the first nuns. Um, really nice, really nice collections. Um, Herodotus, ah, now we're in the fun stuff. These four books here, The Popular Epics in the Middle Ages by uh, J.M. Ludlow, The Fairy Queen, and The Green Fairy Book. These are my oldest books. In fact, the, bring this one out. This one. Where is your publication page? Published in 1865. Yeah. It's actually a very interesting book. Um, just a, an, an analysis by presumably a Cambridge professor of some sort on medieval ep epics. So, more of my needing to be sorted out books. Um, I'm, I really like Joseph Campbell's work, but uh, I do agree with a lot of the criticism that he doesn't really look at other ideas ever. Uh, that's a little win. Um, these little books here, as you can see, are sort of penguin great ideas, and they're just collections and selections from polit uh, political and philosophical works. Um, good extracts if you're not sure on a particular author. I actually bought most of these thinking these were just pocket-sized editions, but a lot of them are interesting reads. Now, here we have the bicentennial edition of The Grimms, which is a lovely edition, and I'll put that up on the big screen here. The bicentennial edition of The Annotated Brothers Grimm. Just look at that cover. That is opulence itself. I read from this on What the Folk a few times. Uh, oh, maybe once or twice. And, oh. This is just a lovely edition. It has some great plates. The commentary is superb in places. Like all commentary, it can be a bit hidden hit and miss. But, you know, it's as faithful a translation as they could do. Admittedly, it is a translation of a translation in most cases, or a translation of a translation of a translation. But, you know, beautiful artwork, brilliantly presented. Ah, oh, I just love this book. It is so beautiful. I love all my books. What can I say? But you know, unlike children, you don't have to love books equally. So yeah, uh, from what I understand, this. Edition might be a bit hard to get now. I think they've stopped printing it. But if you can find a copy, this is the copy of the Grimm's I would recommend. So yeah, the annotated Grimm's. Enjoy. Next, the Book of Symbols. Let's have a look at it on the big screen. The Book of Symbols. This is a very strange book. I picked this up just on a whim, because I will. It's sort of looking at archetypal symbology throughout history and in different cultures. I I'm very interested in symbology as sort of a system. And this is a very interesting and strange look at it. Sort of, there's all manner of different things, sort of, from animals to just time to day, plants, to obscure, well, not really obscure, but, you know, esoteric concepts uh, there more towards the back. So, and it's sort of very interesting and just covers so much ground that I think it's worth looking at if you're interested in symbology like I am. 
Um, obviously drawing upon Jungian ideas. But, you know, give it a look. The Book of Symbols. My collected works of Conan and the Necronomicon. Lord of the Rings. Uh, Yates, Banks. Oh, uh, that collection there, the little wee blue book. John Cooper Clark. Excellent, excellent one. Excellent collection. Um, the Romance and Legend of Chivalry. Now, I bought this in Brighton. And there's such a sweet thing on one of the early pages that I'll show you. I love that. Too Rocky. With love always from Matty. It's clear it didn't last, but I like finding little sort of history of the books. Uh, some hardbacks, my complete wild. And this is a collection of um, OU works on, well, just 19th century novels. Uh, I think there's more, I think there's also a bunch of stuff on feminism in there. Uh, it's it's all the le leftovers from when my mother did her OU cross, and she gave them to me when I did my literary course in Britain. Down here is where I keep all of my Folio Society books, so my lovely, lovely Folk Tales of Britain by Catherine M. Briggs. Oh, just look at all those books. Greek Tales and uh, British Folklore. This is my, these are my leather-bound Barnes & Noble. And I just noticed Shakespeare is upside down. As I said, these books haven't been sorted, but these are really nice additions, lovely to read from. Um, I actually used um, the Shakespeare there to study from while I was in uni, because I just, it was just a, f first of all, it was nice to have all of Shakespeare in one place, so if I felt like referencing another play that I thought was linked thematically, as happened once or twice, I could find the quote within the same book. Because I'm terrible at remembering quotes. And uh, those are some Wordworth um, collections. Uh, the Virginia Woolf one, I really love Orlando. That is a spectacular, spectacular novel. I hope that was insightful and intriguing for you. If you would like book recommendations or would like to recommend a book to me, just leave it in the comments. Thank you and good night.